kid. <laughs> students, students, today we're going to discuss bullies. Bullying has become a real problem in schools today. Yo, 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 I'm down with that. Like one time when my boys and I are tracking to the west side, we run into a couple of guys fronting us East Coast style. What's up? Uh, much like a Polly Shore movie, bullies make victims of us all. That's why you should pay attention to this performance by the Teens Through Understanding Players. I know the secret to friendship. You have to be a friend to make a friend. <laughs> now come on up and help us sing the friendship song. You have to be a friend to make a friend It's a fun new way to be It's time to cleanse yourself Leave your gun on the shelf Don't beat up everyone you see Give a helping hand Don't forget to smile You have to be a friend To make a friend Kevin was excited about making friends and started singing as soon as he got to the front of the class. Attention, attention, Kevin Spencer, principal's office now. Neil Wilkinson, call home. Your father was killed on a construction site. Well, anyway, there's been some concern. Oh. <laughs> Kevin Spencer, Spencer, Spencer. Oh, right, the sociopath. I thought you were dead. Anyway, there's been some concern about the poetry you contributed to the yearbook. Currents of darkness envelop my dreams. Crimson joy midst innocent screams. Rage and atonement blinding my past. I must take it out on the shop teacher's ass. Kevin told the principal that his poem was making a compelling statement about the hierarchy of power within the public education system. Yes. Well, the school psychologist can decide that. I'm sure you know the way to his office. Now be gone. Oh, my lord! Hey, Spencer. You in trouble again, too? I hotlinked all the school computers to a website that sold roofies. This dump has no sense of humor. Wanna go to a bush party this weekend? It's supposed to be really huge. If we go, we'll be cool. Kevin was surprised. He had plenty of experience drinking in the woods. He'd just never done it with other people before. He liked it because no one hassled him, and it was easier to catch city officials doing things with goats that probably aren't covered by any livestock handling laws. <laughs> Usually he only went into the woods alone at night, because it was easier to hallucinate without the distraction of functioning in society. Hey Kevin, you should go to the bush party. You always saying you want people to like you. Though I shudder to think why you'd want to be part of that legion of idiotic spoon-fed sheep. <laughs> Kevin was suspicious too. Normally Timmy only felt ambivalence towards him, and Kevin wondered why he was being so nice. Excuse me, but I think there's a kid bleeding to death out here. <sighs> that Spencer boy was just mentioned on the news again. Little bastard torched a mini putt yesterday. You can't play with him anymore because he's evil. Normally, Timmy thought Kevin was stupid and never hung out with him anyways. But he was out to prove he had more balls than his mother. 
So what if I am hanging out with that Spicer kid? It's Spencer. Always correcting me. Nothing I do is good enough for you! Where, where are you going? Out! I need the Porsche, so take the VW. I don't need you for anything. You're suffocating me! You're gonna read about me tomorrow in the obituaries, you... you fucking draconian lumpen proletariat robber barons! Ah! Hmm... I don't suppose you want to know what he just called us. Little bastard took the Porsche, didn't he? Why can't you show love, Marvin? Gotta know what to show it, Dottie. Bush parties were real popular with kids in Kevin's neighborhood, mostly because there was fuck all else to do in the suburbs. The town used to have a water slide park, which had been constructed from the city's old sewer system. Teenagers didn't seem to mind that they were skidding through tunnels once engorged with human waste. At least they didn't mind until they had to be dewormed. Party! Party! Sepultura fucking rocks! Stop, everyone! My friend Janice is here, and she's written a song for her guitar. So let's give it a listen. It's about kites. I dropped out of university. I was thinking of being a serial killer, but even that's not original anymore. So now I just sit at home and make little plastic shoe trees for a mail order company. Well, until I have enough money to get into DeVry. Kevin was pretty jimmied up on stolen booze, and he was starting to get angry. Because he was surrounded by rich and middle income and lower middle income assholes, who compared to him, were all going to get the world handed to them on a silver platter. If it weren't for the fact that he was eventually going to break into all their homes and steal their stuff anyway, he'd think there was no justice after all. My brother's an engineer. You wouldn't believe what they stuck up his earth on Frosh Week. Let's just say he had to take engineering just to figure out how to get it all out again. I am the master of beer caps. Let's have sex to get back at my parents. Damn it! Why do all you hot chicks always hang out with guys who use drugs? Don't you know it denudes vital brain cells in the cerebellum? Shut up, asshole. Maybe if your crank was as long as your sentences, you'd get some action instead of pulling your putt on the computer. Kevin told Timmy not to worry, and that he did plenty of drugs, and girls didn't like him either. He figured if he ever wanted a girlfriend, he'd just get a hooker like his old man. But for some reason, he didn't feel like it lately. Mostly because years of substance abuse had left him hopelessly impotent. It's teens! Martha! We save the booze. Well, there's my car. Let's go find a place to drink this stuff. Kevin sure was impressed with Timmy's fancy Porsche, but there was just no nice way to tell him that all the money and privilege in the world wasn't going to stop him from being a shitty driver. Tell me something, Spencer. You ever have the feeling your parents don't understand you? Like you're from another world and just don't understand your feelings? Hey boy, I'm taking your ma to the drugstore so she can fake a seizure and I- God damn it! Ma, the kid went and dug up all the dead animals in the yard again. This time he threat them up like Hollywood Squares. No one thinks I've got dick. Not my parents, not those guys at the party. 
Timmy's just a nerdy brainiac who tries too hard. But I've got balls, Spencer. Plenty of balls. Wanna see? Kevin was smart enough to know he was supposed to be frightened. But surprisingly, when Timmy let go of the steering wheel, the car drove straighter than it had all night. Bravo, my friend! Bravo! Whoa, that was sweet. The old man's gonna burst a vessel on this one. Let's go before the cops get here. Kevin told Timmy he knew for a fact the school didn't have any burglar alarms. In fact, the only security was an old janitor who happened to be on the crapper when the car crashed through the back of the toilet. Is that old bastard dead? You better hope not. I'm tired of us getting tried in adult court all the time. Hey, boy, we haven't been shopping at the high school for a while now. What you say we reap some of the benefits of a higher education? Baby, he better report his car stolen so we don't take the heat. You keep an eye on him so he don't go soft. I'll scope out the place and see if they've restocked their inventory since our last visit. Kevin decided to show Timmy his second favorite shaving cream joke. What's your favorite one? And in other news, today a two fugitives from a mental hospital were apprehended <coughs> in a local man's shed. Kevin put all the shaving cream from the teacher's lounge into the freezer. They had some time to kill before they froze solid, so Timmy decided to do some redecorating while Kevin worked on forgetting his life. The following stuff has not been approved by drunken welfare men. You'd have to be as stupid and fucked up as the boy to try something this retarded. So don't do it, cause I'm not paying off any more fucking lawsuits. He's a drunken <laughs> When the cans were finally frozen, they hacked them open and put the frozen cream cylinders into a teacher's desk. And when it thawed out, woohoo, kablooey! It'll flood out the classroom. Now come along, my delinquent duo. I found something interesting in the basement. Whoa, what happened? Feels like I popped a roid the size of a... Whoa, looks like we got some trespassers. Better 9-11 pronto. Mr. Donaldson, I'm sorry. God damn it, Hector. Does it look like anything in here needs to be cleaned? Yeah. You're three minutes early, and that's if we do it twice. Does it excite you to feel my rage? If I don't feel something in two minutes, asshole, I'm calling me driver. Don't worry, Crystal. I got an arrangement with the janitor. He doesn't tell anyone about my little rendezvous, and I don't tell anyone about his little mushroom farm in the basement. Wow, nice shrooms. So you say your imaginary friend is a goose? And he told you there were mushrooms in the basement. Man, you are out there! <laughs> Boy, if those <laughs> chicks saw me now, they'd think I was cool, wouldn't they? Kevin wasn't really listening to Timmy's pissing and moaning on account of the mushrooms were kicking in, and he and Alan were riding first class to Kevin's happy spot. Hey, look what I found. It's the health films only the girls are allowed to watch. So you want to put a penis in your vagina. Fine. Go ahead. She did. 
doesn't look so fun now, does it? That's because she did it without knowing the proper way to do it. Boring! At which point, the erectile tissue... Stimulation of the areola... Labial mucus... Pussy! <laughs> Here's the good part! Now you're ready for vaginal penetration, as demonstrated by my colleagues Dr. Smith and Dr. Jones. So, should I just start fucking? Sweet, baby, sweet! Gross! Looks like a rabbi eating a hoagie. Oh. I can't wait till a girl lets me do that. As Timmy watched the health video, he felt his first sexual stirrings. Kevin didn't notice though, because he was convinced the skeleton in the corner was an assassin sent from the underworld to steal his soul. Bet you go kill it before it gets you, boy! Use Timmy's axe! Jesus Christ, Kevin! Did your idiot friend leave that axe leaning against the door? Oh, that's just fucking perfect! Well, it's gone now, and that can only mean one thing! The X Monkey is here! You know something, Spencer? Maybe I was wrong about you. You're pretty bad shit, man. I never really had a friend before, but I know I can count on. Hey! Where'd you get to, you little fuckwad? Where'd you go, man? The mushrooms are starting to hit me. You can't leave me here to trip alone. a lot of trouble just to get some action. Listen, baby, do you know how much a prostitute costs on a school teacher's salary? Now, get over here. I've got a desk with your name on it, you naughty, naughty girl. Oh, you're not gonna spank me, are you, teacher? Yes, I am. It's... What the hell? What's wrong? Maybe we ought to just call it a night. You still got to pay me, though. <laughs> Kevin figured he'd had about enough fun for one night, so he decided to go home and watch TV and have a few drinks with his parents, just to take the edge off. Bring Daddy a beer, broken head. Holy smokes, what the fuck happened to you? Leave Kevin alone, you stupid fat bastard! <laughs> Don't worry, boy. The big bad ass monkey can't hurt you now. You said ass monkey, you stupid illiterate. Are you saying I don't know my own boy? All I'm saying is I just don't care. Sit down, boy, you're blocking the TV. As he lay in an embryonic ball, Kevin contemplated how the whole evening had given him a new understanding of friendship. Timmy, who'd spent six hours bad tripping and lost in the cold, dark basement, also had a new understanding about friendship. And a new understanding about his parents. Which is why he kneecapped the old man with a two-by-four and got sent to a fancy private clinic for psychological assessment and detox. Kevin went to visit Timmy in the asylum because that's the sort of thing a friend would do and because he didn't want to violate his parole by not showing up for his weekly meeting. Plus, Kevin still believed that if he really pretended long enough, he might eventually feel the thing normals called friendship. Oh yes, Kevin. I'm your new friend. I'm going to be the best friend you ever had. <laughs> How about it, Kevin? <laughs> Good thinking, 
Kevin. Fuck him. He's an asshole anyway. You don't need no friend besides me. Hey, hey Spencer. Doing, Kevin? How's it going, Kevin? Hey, Kevin. Kev. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Nice to see you, Hi, Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Pass the catch up. What the fuck is that noise? Who cares? You, you eat like a pig! You look like a pig. Fuck you, asshole! Well, it's about fucking time that noise was driving me nuts! That's a short fucking drive. Give me a smoke. Ain't got none. Ask the boy. Hey, Kevin, you got any spots? <laughs> Good one, boy. <laughs> hey, bring Daddy a smoke. <laughs> Jesus, I thought you was just chopping down a fucking tree. You want a can of meat, boy? Bring me a can of beer while you're up. Me too. Show some fucking respect, broken head. I'm your father. You just get us our beers, then go to your room. You better not cross his path. <laughs>